I've been lucky. I've lived an extraordinary life, exploring the universe and attending the odd party or two. But imagine I could go anywhere and see anything. Well, in this bad boy, I can. Join me on a fantastical trip to my favorite places. After all, why should astronauts have all the fun? Every journey has a beginning, and my own had a very difficult start. At age 21, I received a life-changing diagnosis. Doctors said a disease would steal my independence, and then my life. So I decided to devote what time I had left to studying something truly worthwhile. We've all seen computer animations of the Big Bang. The Big Explosion. The Flying Galaxies, and then us. But that's not right. It was far more elegant, and strange. To see what really happened, I'm going to wind back time. As we go back, everything converges. Space itself is shrinking. Unwinding the work of 200 million lifetimes. Until finally, we reach a point of infinite density. The beginning of not just space, but time as well. This is my life's obsession. The Big Bang. There are no fireworks. Light won't exist for hundreds of thousands of years. Our universe begins in darkness, not in light. And time has begun to flow forwards. So the Big Bang must have caused itself. Because without time, nothing can have come before it. All around us heat and energy are spreading at incredible speed. There are slight imperfections, some parts hotter than others. In a billionth of a second, it's grown from smaller than an atom, to a billion kilometers. This rapid inflation can't last forever. The universe is settling into steadier growth, and cooling. 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the light switch of the universe is thrown. A flash so bright we will still be able to detect it in 14 billion years. I had predicted that this flash would contain fluctuations preserved from the Big Bang. Our universe, a magnified version of its earlier tiny self. The tiny imperfections press and then, are now causing the universe to expand at different rates. Everything that exists. Planets. Stars. Galaxies. And even us, are formed from these imperfections. I am still on the same journey I began years ago. Just as the expanding universe slowed, 
so did the progress of my disease. I've been lucky to live to see some of my predictions confirmed. That first flash of light we saw is now called the cosmic microwave background. You hear it in the crackle of a radio and see it in the static of a television. It reveals wrinkles in the beginning of time. Which is why I believe perfection is so overrated. Nothing in nature is perfect. If it were, we wouldn't exist at all. Any good adventure means taking a few risks. Even if your reputation is at stake. Years ago I made a very public bet with fellow scientist Kip Thorne about one of the most mind-boggling phenomena in the universe. It was a bet I would live to regret. People always ask me what would happen if you fell in a black hole. Well, there's only one way to find out. Hidden in the center of our galaxy, by thick dust clouds, lies one of the more extraordinary things in the universe. Sagittarius A star. A black hole with the mass of four million suns. It bends light around itself like a cosmic lens. So massive and dense that it warps space-time into an infinitely deep well. Its gravity is so strong, not even light can escape. My bet was about what happens to things, sucked into this warped edge of reality. The nearer we get, the stronger gravity pulls. Harder on our front, than our back. Too strong and it will stretch us out like spaghetti. Hopefully we won't get turned into pasta. I'm going to need some serious power to fight the tide of gravity. Go any deeper. Cross the event horizon, and it'll be the last trip I ever make. Nothing escapes out of a black hole. Or does it? Eventually, I realized something could. It became known as Hawking Radiation. You see, space isn't actually empty. Virtual particles and antiparticles are popping into existence all the time and canceling each other out. At the edge of a black hole, one particle might fall in, but the other could escape out into space. This would drain energy from the black hole, and eventually cause it to totally disappear. So, I bet that everything that had ever fallen into the black hole, would be lost for good. But that causes a huge problem. You see, you can think of the universe as a giant data file which constantly changes as one event follows the next. But if black holes can destroy part of this data, then the entire file becomes corrupted. And both the past and the future of the universe becomes uncertain. 
Eventually, I realized this must be impossible. So I lost a bet. My latest theory is that the data is not lost, but preserved in turbulence around the black hole. Like a fingerprint. So the universe is safe. For now. But if you ever find yourself heading for your own personal black hole, keep an open mind, and take your chances. You will find a way out of it in the end. Our next destination reminds me of being a young child, full of wonder. Gazing at the stars, I always imagined there was someone up there, looking back. As I grow older I am more convinced than ever, that we are not alone. After a lifetime of wondering, I am helping to lead a new global effort to find out. The Breakthrough Listen Project will scan the nearest million stars for signs of life. But I know just the place to start looking. In recent years we've found thousands of planets outside our solar system. Some are burning hellscapes of fire and larva. Others are solid diamond, bathed in deadly X-rays from a dying star. But some are more like home. Incredibly, we found one only 16 light years away. Right on our doorstep. Please say 3 to C. One of my favorites. And one of the closest habitable world candidates discovered so far. It's a breathtaking sight. A super Earth, five times more massive than ours. Here, a year lasts only 36 days. Its atmosphere could be thick, smothering the surface in superheated smog. Or worse, the gravity of its nearby sun could lock the planet's spin. One side always facing the sun. Perhaps not such a good place for a picnic after all. But if 832C has escaped such fates, this planet could have Earth-like temperatures. With abundant liquid water. And where there is water, there is very often life. Plants here wouldn't be green. Photosynthesis from the sun's red light would produce purple or black foliage. There could be animals too. Perhaps intelligent ones. From Earth we cannot see what lies on 832C. But if intelligent life has evolved here, we should be able to hear it. This planet is in range of the Breakthrough Listen Project. Using the world's most sensitive radio telescopes. What might we hear? Maybe an alien opera. Or perhaps a phone call home. One day we might receive a signal from a planet like this. But we should be wary of answering back. 
meeting an advanced civilization could be like Native Americans encountering Columbus. That didn't turn out so well. Time to leave, I think. Finding intelligent life would be the greatest single discovery in history. It would force us to change. We would have to give up the idea that we are unique. And start acting with more compassion and humility. At school I was never more than halfway up my class. I like to think it was a very bright class. I preferred spending time taking things apart to see how they worked. Today I study the machinery of the universe. And surprises are everywhere. When I'm in need of inspiration, I often look to my favorite planet. A speck of light in the night sky that turns out to be one of the most spectacular destinations in the solar system. Saturn. I've no doubt that in the future, it will be a massive tourist hotspot. Complete with hot dog stands and screaming children. But for me, it's the most beautiful cog in an intricate machine. The rings formed by Saturn's immense gravity look calm. But trust me, that's an illusion. They are immense boulders of ice and dust. Racing at 40,000 miles per hour. A cosmic NASCAR race, complete with all the crashes. And there are enormous ripples, caused by comets striking and tilting the rings. But, by catching or deflecting comets, Saturn could be acting as a shield. Protecting the inner solar system from cosmic debris. Safeguarding life on Earth. Saturn also shelters more than 60 moons. Like Enceladus. Iridescent plumes spew from the surface hundreds of miles into space. Saturn's gravity pushes and pulls on this little moon constantly, heating it through friction, giving it a cosmic workout. The aren't smoke or rock, but water vapor. Thanks to Saturn, Enceladus seems to have heat, water, and organic molecules. It could harbor alien life, hidden in subterranean oceans. Saturn might have helped life develop on Earth too. When the galaxy was forming, Saturn acted as a sort of cosmic counterbalance. Its gravity stopping Jupiter from spiraling into the Sun, taking all the planets with it. Earth included. We may owe our very existence to Saturn.
Something that as a child, I would have been delighted to know. Back then, I remember a friend bet another a bag of sweets, that I would never amount to anything. I don't know how the bet was settled, but I've learned that curiosity can take you to the stars. And when you get there, who knows what you might find. Like Saturn, the universe is full of surprises. I am excited to show you my final choice. Of all the places in the universe, this is my absolute favorite. A world of extraordinary beauty and breathtaking diversity. Best of all, the journey is a sin. This remarkable planet gave us life, and continues to support us, even as we do it great harm. Here, I am spoiled for destinations. I could choose to visit the cradle of humanity. Journey into the heart of the planet. Or back into the mists of time. But where I am heading is far more special to me. It's inspired me to do some of my best work. Given me many happy memories and some sand in unfortunate places. My home away from home. Santa Barbara, California. In 1974, Caltech offered me a job in California, and I jumped at the opportunity. In the sun with my young family, it was a world away from the gray skies of Cambridge. I've traveled the globe, but I've never found anywhere quite like this. Many of my happiest days have been spent here, watching the waves roll in. It's a place with abundant life. The largest animals that have ever lived, pass here on their epic annual voyage. It's a truly inspiring place to be. And it even has a beach club for theoretical physicists. The Cavley Institute. The perfect place for blue sky thinking. It was here, overlooking the endless Pacific Ocean, that Jim Hartle and I developed a radical theory. We proposed the boundary condition of the universe was that it has no boundary. In essence, that the laws of physics would hold true always. Everything in the universe, determined by a set of unchanging laws, even at the Big Bang. Completely self-contained. When you think of the universe like that, it's easy to see how truly unique a place like this is. It depends on a whole series of cosmic coincidences. For instance, if the moon had never formed, the Earth's spin would be less stable, and there'd be catastrophic shifts in the seasons. Not great for a beach town. And if the charge of an electron was set just slightly differently, then stars wouldn't burn to give us light. There'd be no California dreaming, or suntans. If gravity were just a touch weaker, matter wouldn't have congealed into stars and planets. So forget about beautiful beaches. There would be no Earth, 
or solar system. And if the rate of expansion after the Big Bang had been any smaller, the universe would have recollapsed before it ever reached its present size. So nothing would be here at all. In fact, most outcomes would give rise to universes that although beautiful, would contain no one able to wonder at their beauty. So next time you find yourself thinking about your life, please don't take it for granted. Take a moment to marvel at all the wonders that allow you to exist. All the incredible things that happened, just so you could be here to enjoy your own favorite places.